This morning, uh, we heard a number of the challenges that Libya is facing. This afternoon, I'm hopefully going to provide some ways forward for at least two of those challenges, developing research capacity and building international collaborations. Now, I shall not go through it slavishly, but this slide set has been prepared to be a resource which you can take away and use afterwards. And if I'm absolutely honest with you, the reason why it was prepared in the way that it is, is because so many partnerships fail. And I wanted to look at why those partnerships failed and what could be done to avoid failure in the future. Now, the experience base for doing this comes from the Leadership Foundation, which is a body based in London, but which provides services for universities in the UK, and we work with 32 other countries doing a range of activities which time prevent me from going into. But one of them, which was, I think, one of the most significant projects that we did, was with Libya in March 2012. This follows the liberation. It follows the realization that completely new people needed to be prepared to lead the universities and I can honestly say that it was one of the most exhilarating, productive, and energetic programs that I have ever had the pleasure of leading. The energy and the inspiration to take Libyan higher education forward through that program was just amazing. And I have huge confidence that if the conditions are right, it can actually happen. And I won't go through the objectives of the program, but they were to build capacity, and Dr. Fati was there on the program with us. Let's turn to partnerships. There is no such thing as just one type of partnership. And I think it's helpful from a university's perspective to see partnerships in three ways. The first is the partnership that an individual in one institution wishes to form with an institution, uh, a, a, an individual in another institution. Maybe it's that they have a common research interest, they want to work together, they know each other, and those partnerships are up there as a type three partnership. Now, if those partnerships work well, other colleagues in each university could become involved and the relationship can grow to one whereby a department in one university links with a department in another and you then have a type two partnership. And then, again, depending on the outcome, depending on the confidence that each partner has in the other, this work can rise to a level where, at the top of the university, the vice chancellor or president says, Libya is a really important country for us. X is a really useful and significant university for us. So let us form a partnership as two universities. And the work 
that might have started in engineering, can carry through into medicine and to other subjects, and so on. And then you have an institutional partnership at the highest level built into the strategy of each institution. Now, it is first and foremost, I think, important to establish why we actually want a partnership with another country or another university. What is it that we actually want to gain? Because depending on what it is, different countries, different types of university, or even groups of university might be more important to us. So I think the first sets of decisions to be made are precisely what are your motives for setting up the partnership. Legal um, difficulties uh, can prevent a number of things from happening, but fortunately there is more than one way of conducting a partnership, and sometimes it may involve the creation of a third body, jointly owned by the other two, that can take forward the work. And drawing on one of the earlier presentations this afternoon, maybe a commercial company could be involved in that partnership and add richness to it and benefit to both countries. What doesn't always happen when setting up partnerships is to establish clear objectives. Because unless you know what you want to achieve, it's very difficult to decide whether you have achieved it or not. And the questions on this particular slide, are those objectives clear? Is there an agreed timeline? And the others are important for that process. If we look particularly at research partnerships, what might they look like? Well, my view is that partnerships work because of the people involved rather than because of the structure involved. And so to that end, exchanges of staff and students are vitally important. Establishing what their joint research interests are is important so that both will benefit from it. Capacity will be built. And partnerships may start from the most unexpected base. One of my favorites is a collaboration between a very successful university in the UK and a not so well-known university in India. The British University did not have the facilities to analyze certain samples, and the Indian University did. And the start of their partnership was purely around the analysis of certain samples. It grew so that students started exchanging between the two institutions staff started exchanging between the two institutions. Another subject area which the Indian University wanted to develop was one which the British University was an expert in. They helped the development. And that partnership has gone from strength to strength. So there is benefit not just to the two universities, but to the two localities in which they are located. It's quite often tempting to go into a partnership without evaluating other options. Are you clear what sort of partner you actually want? What sort of size they might be, what sort of values they might have, and so on. And for the longer term, those things are every bit as important as how you happen to get on with the people there. 
The accountants will tell you that you should conduct a due diligence process, and I think that's very important. When you have decided who to partner with, it's helpful if you agree which role each partner will take. This might, might sound very obvious, but so many people don't do it. It results in confusion, it can damage trust, and it can bring the partnership to an end. We've heard reference this morning to world-class objectives. It's therefore very important that the quality aspects of partnerships and research and how research is conducted in each institution are taken into account. For instance, guidelines on research ethics. Is there clarity about where the, international, uh, the intellectual property rights will, risk, will rest? And then, for long-term sustainability, the financial implications. Is there a business plan? Has risk management been conducted? And are those things in place which will give the senior members of your staff confidence that that partnership should become an important part of the strategy of your university? In my experience of running partnerships, um, largely with the Middle East, one of the single most important factors is to have in each institution a senior person who is very clearly the champion for that particular partnership, who will communicate with senior management, who has the seniority to make things happen. If that person is in place in both institutions, the prospects of success are very strong. Some universities have an international office uh, which will undertake or support you with some of these functions. And then finally, how will we know if the partnership is successful? Well, I refer you back to an earlier slide whereby it's critical to establish what you both expect to get from the partnership so that it can be measured and measured in a, in a way that is appropriate for both parties. And then in summary, trust and confidence between the two parties is vital. That requires a good understanding of the other system and the other institution. I have seen the most fruitful partnerships de develop between the UK and India through leaders of institutions in those two countries undertaking a leadership program together. Iraq was mentioned earlier on, and I had the privilege with John Law of being involved in a project in that country, and there are now strong partnerships between the universities on that and British universities. I would suggest that even though there are major security issues in Libya at the moment, that should not slow things down. Things can be done in a third country. Education is too important to be delayed. There is a huge range of possibilities, and inspired by our first program with Libya, the Leadership Foundation would be delighted to work with Libya and with British institutions wanting to partner with Libya to try to help those partnerships to be a great success. Thank you very much.